Hey, good evening, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You have reached another episode of Inspired Life Ministries, where I'm one of your hosts, Pastor Kofi Bryant Sr., and this is my lovely bride, my lovely helpmate, my lovely pastor, my lovely teacher, Michelle Bryant. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so we are here this evening, praise God. Hallelujah. To enlighten you, to inspire you, yeah. to entice you to even intoxicate you with the word even if that is a, a such a thing amen we came to challenge you with the word of God this evening so that you will choose to live out every assignment and complete what God has called you to do amen yeah, amen yes glory be to God so listen sit back let's get ready get your favorite beverage legal beverage of choice so you can hear us fluently amen and get your coffee or whatever you're drinking, and you sit back with your notes. You ask questions in the live chat. You chat back with us and get back with us. Let's experience life-changing time together. Amen? Amen. This is the evening and the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. So let us get to the Word of God this evening. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you're more than welcome. You. Amen. So today we're going to be studying from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12, the Old Testament. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. Amen. And we're going to learn something about David or maybe be reminded about something as it relates to David, who was a man after God's own heart. Yes, he was. Now here it is. The prophet Nathan stood before King David and he stood bravely. Because his words were from above, amen, and were important to this great warrior of a king. Who's the king? I'm speaking of King David, amen. He was a warrior, amen. And so as the prophet Nathan stood before King David, his heart was beating fast. A little faster than that, Pastor. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so his heart was beating fast because he was well aware of David's temper, mm -hmm. and he did not have good news, amen. Mm -hmm. I said in the beginning that it was who that stood before King David. Come on, type it in. Yes. Nathan, who was what? A, begin with a P, prophet. Y'all are excellent. Amen. Yes, they are. Amen. You all are excellent. And so here it is. God was displeased with David and had chosen Nathan the prophet to show David his sinful ways. Amen. Amen. I need you all to stay with us. Amen. Amen. Because this is important. Amen. It's life changing. Amen life-changing message amen and so how many agree that we love to hear when a prophetic word is spoken mm -hmm. when it's good when it talks about blessings yeah. when it talks about what god is going to do and when it talks about what god has done amen but oftentimes when a prophet comes before us with correction Mm, we're not as eager and as excited to hear that, but we should be because the word tells us that God corrects those whom he loves. Gosh, amen. Yeah. And we had that on last Sunday. Amen. Mm -hmm. So here it is. Nathan in his wisdom tells David this story. So um, if you're with us in your Bibles, you should be at 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. And Pastor Kofi is going to read for us, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. 2 Samuel. Chapter 12, yes, verses verse one number one. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. Yes. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing mm -hmm. except one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished and it grew together with him. Yes. And was with his children. He ate of his own food and drank of his own cup. Yeah. And lay in his bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. He really liked this land, right? And the traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock mm -hmm. and from his own herd to prepare one of the wafering men or man who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Now, of course, David is outraged, right? Yeah, he's starting to get 
his nostrils starting to get real big. You know how that happens? Yes. <laughs> and he sentences this man to death, but Nathan isn't finished. Go ahead, pass the people continue. So David's on. anger was greatly against or aroused against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die, and he shall restore fourfold for the lamb because he did this thing because he had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. I anointed you king of Israel and delivered you from the hand of Saul. Yeah. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives unto your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. Yeah. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. That's it. Keep going. Mm -hmm. To nine, please. Why have you despised you. the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with a sword. You have taken his wife mm, to be your wife mm -hmm. and have killed him with a sword of the people of Anna. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. So right here, if you all would answer this question... What is King David's response? And I'm going to give you a few seconds for those who are going to participate. Amen. What is King David's response? How does this great king handle being told he has sinned? Uh -huh. This is a good message, you all, for us to learn from. It's good because it's going to help us. It's teaching us. It's showing us. How to examine our own selves. Yes, Amen. Yes, yes, and not just so much seeing the character defects and the character flaws of everyone else near and around us. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we need to start with ourselves. Amen. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Remember the question I asked was, what is King David's response? So David said to Nathan, the prophet, I have sinned against the Lord. So the next question I pass to Kofi is, how many of us who are in this audience is truthful, Ooh. bold, Ooh. courageous, Ooh. yet humble before the Lord to say, to be able to admit, I have sinned against the Lord when confronted with sin? Now, I'm going to ask that question again. Please. How many of us who in the audience is truthful, bold, courageous, yet Lord, humble see. before the Lord to it. say, to be able to admit, I have sinned against the yes. Lord when confronted with sin. See, oftentimes we're confronted with sin, but sin breeds sin, and we'll lie about that thing, or we'll deceive ourselves. We had it on Sunday. Remember in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, how it says, only just deceiving ourselves mm -hmm. when we sinned, Amen. Thinking that we're doing right, but only to do what? To, to deceive ourselves. Yeah. And so here it is. The, the first responsibility that we have when we have sin, we must recognize. Amen. We must recognize that we have done wrong. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times when we do wrong, Pastor Kofi, uh -huh. Inspire Life Ministries, visitors, first-time visitors, reoccurring visitors, like, subscribe people, all of us. Amen. We don't want to we don't want to acknowledge and we don't want to recognize that we've done wrong. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the message that you preached, I think, last month, mm -hmm. um, with Adam and Eve, the yes, blame game. The blame game. Amen. Yes. That we're always looking to blame someone else. But there comes a, a time in all of our lives where we just need to walk in truth and be truthful. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what's the second thing? Is regret. We must have true remorse for doing wrong, amen, and for the pain and problems we've caused. Mm. So I want to do, I'm going to say number one again, the first thing is responsibility. We must recognize that we have done wrong. Number two, the second is regret. Mm -hmm. We must have true remorse for doing wrong and for the pain and problems that we've caused. See, every time we sin against God, we grieve him. We grieve the Holy Spirit. Every time we, we commit sin, you know what we do? We cause pain and problems 
not just for ourselves, but for everyone that is connected to us. Amen. You know, Pastor, I Go want ahead. To add this one thing. To yeah, that. please you do. You know, when when we're selfish, we're taking care of who? Self. Self. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so while you're being selfish, you you do something or you 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 have an action. Here's what we need to understand that's really going on. When we sin against God yes. or do that thing against the judgment of God, we hurt God, Yes. but there are also some built-in responses to our action. Yes. There are some built-in results to our disobedience. Yes. So watch this. Not only did you first disobey God, and, and displease God whom you cannot see. Then you displease yourself. Yeah. And then after you displease yourself, real, this thing becomes extremely horizontal now. Yeah. Because you're dealing with yourself and then you see the offspring or the result on another. Yeah. So you see, when you do one thing that you're believing that it's just going to hurt you, you're hurting God because God intended for you to get something out of that mm -hmm. and to develop your character better. Yes, and yes, then he yes. wanted someone else that's watching your life to yeah. get better. Come on, and Pastor. instead, they're going to see you go through a perpetual cycle of disobedience. Yeah. They're going to feel ill will. They're not going to feel like they can trust the Lord. Yes. And so on and so on. So I'm saying this point to you all. That when you sin, please remember this. You do not just hurt you. You do Hallelujah. not just hurt you. You don't Hallelujah. even just hurt the person you hurt and you. You hurt God. You hurt the person that you're supposed to be. Yes. You hurt the people you're supposed to influence. And, you ready for this? You hurt the people that they are supposed to influence. Yeah. Amen. Because God set up the game of dominoes in that way. Amen. One thing affects another thing affects it another does. thing. One person affects another person. And so when who you were supposed to affect... You may not get there because of your disobedience. Yeah. So yeah. make sure you're not being selfish. And if you are, just know you're hurting several people. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, and you say several people, but I will go back to the lesson that we had on last Sunday. It's not just several people. It's generations because of sin. Our sin breeds sin, and there are consequences. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. So the third is that we need to resolve it. Amen. Yes. We must be, thank you, Pastor Kobe. That was powerful. Amen. We must Absolutely. be committed. Yeah, mm -hmm. he is. We must be committed never to repeat the act, oh, nice. regardless of the nice. temptation yeah. or the situation. But watch this. You might repeat the act, the sin. And now that you repeated it, now, Lachelle, that you repeated it, now, Pastor Kobe, that you've repeated, repeated it, it. amen, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? What am I to do? Come on, what do you do when you repeatedly keep committing the same sin over and over and over again? Wow, so many things, right? Yeah. One of those things is you become more tolerant yep. of doing it again. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Making excuses. Yeah, you making excuses. Deceiving yourself. Yeah. If Lying. It wasn't as bad for you and yep. you think you can handle the next wave yes. of results, then you'll do it again. Yeah. And you'll do it again and again until then you're not even thinking of the challenge yeah. of being disobedient. You yeah. just do it. Yeah. That's yeah. called reprobate. Yeah. And if you all would go over and, and read about the story with David, thank you, Pastor. Absolutely. About how he sinned, he committed sin with Bathsheba. That you will see that he was miserable mm. in his spirit inwardly until he repented to God. And it's, I don't Tell believe <laughs> that King David didn't know. He was a man after God's own heart. That's what the Bible says. Right? God says that David is a man after my heart. Amen? David, King David. A man after God's own heart. So you can't tell me that he didn't have relationship with God. He had relationship with him. But not only did he have relationship with him. When you have relationship, don't you know there is a conviction by way of the Holy Spirit that convicts us? But sometimes we can get so deeply breathed into sin. Come on. One sin causes us to commit another sin. Amen. Yes. So now that I've committed um, um, adultery. Amen. 
Yeah, fornication, right? <laughs> For those who, you know, single and, and having sex, amen. I'm guilty. When I was single, I did it too. Not proud of it, but I ain't in bondage to it, okay? Amen. So, now you married. You commit adultery. But now you, you lying about that thing. You set the woman's husband up to be killed so you could take her as your wife. Amen. Man. Hallelujah. You thought you had some drama. Mm. But it was only after David repented that his joy was restored back to Absolutely. him. Absolutely. I feel like I got a little bit off, but it all ties in together. Amen. So here it is. The question was, or, or the statement was, you might repeat the act of sin, right? And so I asked now, what am I to do? What are you to do now that you keep repeating this same sin over and over and over again? Amen. Be, you need to be honest with God. You need to stop lying. You need to stop deceiving yourself. Because all of it is a lie. Amen. Mm -hmm. You need to be honest with God and you need to say, I am struggling in this area of fornication. I'm struggling in this area of committing adultery. I'm struggling in this area with this addiction that I have. I'm struggling in this area of lust. I'm struggling in this area of lying, stealing, cheating. Come on, Pastor. I'm struggling. I'm struggling, God. See, here's the thing. Sin feels good. But it does not glorify God. And so we have to ask Jesus Christ who died for us, who was seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. We need to ask him for his help. Yes. He went back to heaven to the Father. He left us the help. Who's the help? The Holy Spirit. So we need to do what we need to be honest with God. We need to repent. We need to turn away from this sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need to do how many degrees, Pastor? 180. Right. And we don't want to do 360 because what? 360 is returning to the previous position. Yeah. The Amen. only thing you want 360 is waves, guys. Okay? <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't catch that, but. There's a community Praise God. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay, okay. Amen. <laughs> you got the straight stuff. Amen. <laughs> so anyway, here it is. We need to repent. Amen. Turn away from the sin. Uh -huh. But when we turn away from sin, we're turning 180. Like Pastor said, we're not turning 360 to go right back to where we left from. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. As we turn away from sin, we need to turn towards something. But not sin, not idolatry, that's still sin. We need to turn towards God. Mm. The repentance. You might hear the word metatonia. It's called for throughout the Bible is a summons to a personal, absolute, and ultimate unconditional surrender to God as sovereign. God is El Shaddai. It means that he's all sovereign. And though repentance, it includes sorrow and regret, it is more than that. Mm -hmm. It's repenting. It's when one makes a complete change of a direction That's of a 100 and degree turn towards God. Amen. Degrees, yes. Turn away from sin mm -hmm. and turn towards God. Turn away from sin and turn towards God. See, we're talking about turning away from sin, but we must turn to what? And who? You type it in. God. Amen. Turn away from the sin and turn to God. God. See, when Jesus said repent, he was talking about a change of heart. Amen. He was talking about a change of heart. An inner change that gives rise to new ways of living. That exalt Christ and it gives evidence of the truth of the gospel. Of the New Testament, the Greek word translated as repent, I never already said it, I'll say it again, is metanio, amen? Repentance is the act of saying sorry or asking for forgiveness yes. for sins and wrongdoings. Yes. Some of us got so much pride and so much anger and so much self-righteousness, we're so self-absorbed with ourselves that we don't even ask for forgiveness. We don't even apologize to people. And sometimes you have to be the bigger person, even when you weren't the one who did the wrong. Offense, right. 
you 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 didn't do the offense. Thank you, Pastor. Mm-hmm. Just go ahead and make peace. Hmm. The Bible says as much as possible, be at peace with all men. Amen. But you have a what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Just a funny um, story, mm-hmm. um, really quick. And I, uh, as husband and wife, we uh, have some disagreements every now and then. And so I find myself uh, as the husband. The Bible tells the husband to dwell with his wife according to knowledge Mm -hmm. of what he has of her. And so there are times when we are engaging in our disagreement. And I will... Heated discussion. Heated discussion, (laughs) agreements and stuff. And I would say to her, I would just repeat what she's saying. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because I have figured out in that particular session that I wasn't going to win. And that wasn't about winning anything. It was about getting to a place of re-establishing who we were. Yeah. For instance, before our debate or heavy discussion or we argument. Were, or argument, we were on one accord. Think about what I'm saying. Yeah. On one accord. Mm, but then good. when we had a disagreement, there was a fracture in our accord. So once we have a fracture in our accord, it's either going to be my way or her way. Well, what about the right way? What about God's way? Yeah, amen. So when we stop what we're doing, repent, make it right. And the way we do that is we reestablish who's right, which is Christ. Yeah, amen. You follow me? So what does the word say about our situation? And then she has yeah. to yield to that. I have to yield to that. Amen. Yeah. But it's not going to come until a soft answer comes. Because the Bible says a soft way, a soft answer does turn, what? Turns, turns away wrath. Turns away and wrath. so if both of us are heated, you did this, well, you did that, well, you did this, well, you did that. And that, you know what I mean? Add another one in there. When that happens, that slows up the progress. So, like she just said, remorse for the past conduct. Yeah. You follow Amen. me? Forgiveness. Let's go ahead and allow a winner to be presented yeah. in the argument Amen. so we can get to the truth. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. You got it. Thank you. So an example of repentance is praying to God uh-huh. for forgiveness. In other words, we want to pray, we want to ask God for forgiveness. Amen. It's being remorseful for past behavior, past conduct of the sin. Amen. Amen. Or our sin. Amen. What is Repentance. I know I'm being redundant, amen, but we really need to get this, amen, and let it take root in our heart. Acknowledging the sin, amen. I need to acknowledge it. When when Prophet Nathan came before King mm-hmm. David, the warrior, and, Pro, and, and Prophet Nathan knew that King David had an anger problem, or had temper problem, temper, right? He was like, he said, can you imagine his heart beating really, really fast, right? And so he has to stand before him. But King David said, he admitted, he acknowledged the sin. It was brought right before him. Amen. God is so awesome. But I'm telling you, how many of us, if a prophet came before us, we know we did what they saying. But we think he's talking about, or she talking about somebody else's situation. We're like, oh, damn me. We would be just like King David, I believe. But we want to go and grow beyond that place. Amen. And being spiritually mature, that when we have done wrong, that we will admit our wrong. That we'll take ownership of it. Amen. Yes. Don't live in it. Don't soak in it. Amen. Take Repent. Ownership. Take ownership. David said, I and I alone have sinned. Yeah. Amen. And that's what he said. He said that to the Lord. Amen. And we need to be just like that. Amen. So we need to acknowledge sin. We need to confess the sin. We need to ask for forgiveness. We need to turn away from the sin. Yes. And restore the wrong that was done. Mm-hmm. So if I commit adultery in my marriage, I'm married to Pastor Kobe, and if I commit adultery, right, and he found out, well, maybe I just was so convicted of the Holy Spirit, I came and I told him. I'm acknowledging it first with God. This is the sin. God already know. I acknowledge it, and now I confess it. I need to confess it to my husband. I need to ask for his forgiveness. But first I'm going to God. Then I need to turn away from that sin. And so when I say restoring the wrong done, I need to go back and restore. See, trust is broken. 
when there's adultery in, in a marriage. Amen. Trust Amen. is broken. And so how are you going to restore? How are you going to forgive? Amen. See, God is calling for us to do these things. Amen. Not just talk about it. Amen. But God wants us to be about his business. It's more than just mere talking. It's really taking the word of God and applying it to our lives daily. Amen. Remember mm -hmm. I said on last Sunday, amen, or maybe on Wednesday or maybe some other time before that this is about a lifestyle. It's a way of a living. Amen. So what are practical signs of repentance? Repentant people are willing to confess all their sins, not just sins that got them into trouble, amen, mm -hmm. not just the sins that got them into trouble, but repentant people need to face the pain that their sin caused oh, others, others, amen. Yes. Don't you know that all of us, amen, have committed some sins that it caused pain to other people, and they still live with it. And the only thing that they're looking for is not for you to soak in it. They're just looking for an apology. They're just designed for you to ask for forgiveness. Think about some people that have caused you pain because of their sin. What is it that you truly want from them? Because let me say this. We ought not to be, um, what's the word, gloating mm -hmm. in somebody else's pain and misery. Amen. We should not do that. When the time comes, amen. And we are praying for the consequences of the sins that we have committed. We shouldn't glory in that. If somebody's done something that caused you pain, amen, you should already have a heart of forgiveness. Because what happens if they never come and ask you to forgive them? See, before you have relationship with them and can have harmony in a relationship with people or person, you first have to have it with God. Amen. Repentant people ask for forgiveness from those they hurt. Mm -hmm. So what is the fruit of repentance? Mm -hmm. It's an outward expression of a transformed heart and a changed life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again because I want you all to write this down, voice speak it into your um, electronic device. The mm -hmm. fruit of repentance is the outward, outward expression, expression of a transformed heart and a changed right. life. So what does that include? Obedience. Love. Yeah. Good works. It is a way of living. Yes. Good works. Hallelujah. Is a way of living. With salvation. And applying the fruit of the spirit. Absolutely. Applying God's word. Amen. Not just being about good works. Amen. But got all this bitterness inside of you. Because mm. see you could be about a good work. Amen. You could stand at the door and usher and you could greet the people. But if you harboring unforgiveness and you got all this bitterness and all this other ugly stuff inside of you, it means nothing. Amen. Because I don't want to hear our father say to me, depart from me, you work of iniquity because I never knew you. But I want to hear him say, welcome home, my good and faithful, faithful servant and who I'm well pleased. Amen. My, my. So you all have been great. That concludes this message. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 12 verses 1 through 9. I encourage you to go back, replay it, listen to it over and over again. Let it sound like a broken record till it is deeply rooted inside of your hearts. Amen. Because we're looking, we're designed for hearts to be transformed, for lives to be transformed. Amen. Yes. Because when we, when there's a transformation that takes place in your heart and in my heart, amen, that we're going to be better ambassadors for yes. Christ. Amen. We can be yes. better kingdom men and kingdom women for God's glory. Amen. Amen. Snatching people what? Out of Ouch. darkness, Ouch. amen, yes. so that they will be saved and that they will go also and learn this great gospel of Jesus Christ and Ouch. go out to the nations, amen, go out into their cities and their communities and the neighborhoods yes. right in your own home and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. Yes. But I'm not just talking about a preaching where you open up your mouth, amen, on, and, you, and you do a Bible scripture. I'm talking about your lifestyle. How yes. are you living, How amen, you living? the way you live, amen. That preaches louder, amen, on, than when you speak the word word of God. Amen. But we need to do both. Amen. They yes. both are equally important. But don't just speak the word. Amen. And teach the word. Amen. But yet behind closed doors you live in a hypocritical lifestyle. Yes. God is not pleased with that. Mm. I've been saying it. We need to learn to build each other up. We need to bring the gifts together. Yes. 
and work them together. We don't need to compare ourselves with each other. We don't need to compare ourselves with that gift and this gift. All of the gifts are necessary for the body of Christ. And that's why God gave them to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, yes. Lord God. Worthy yes. are you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on and give God praise, y'all. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. 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 For you. Hallelujah. When you don't open up your mouth and say to the person Lord. what God told you to say, you have sinned against God. Mm. We need to obey God. And we need to be immediately obeying him. Mm. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. Forgive me for pointing from being rude. Amen. Oh, no. You need to hear it. We need to get this. Amen. Yes. God bless you, Pastor Kobe. Hey. Thank you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Again, Glory to you. The Lord has been very rich Hallelujah. to us this evening. He has positioned your ear, inclined your ear to hear the word of yes. God that will be plainly spoken tonight. Thank you, Almighty God. And so the word has Thank been you, plainly Jesus. spoken and received. Hey, listen, friend and family member. This message was strictly for you. It wanted you to examine your life and to do a 180-degree mm -hmm. turn. Jesus. Not a 180-degree turn towards a different sin. Thank you. You know how you stop smoking cigarettes, but you pick up eating? We're not talking about that. We're not talking about laying something down and picking a replacement sin mm. up. That's we want to put down all things that are not like Christ. Amen. And that is the 180 degree turn that we're speaking of. Is when you turn your life towards Christ. Yeah. Centered life. Amen? A Christ-centered life. And when you do this, my friend, God will heal your circumstances. That involves forgiving. That involves the healing that will take place. Everything that pastor just preached on. You must repent to get that done. Amen? 180 degree turn. Well, who with me is willing to do a 180 degree turn? Some of you all are not in Christ right now. You're in your own thinking. You're in the thinking that says you are God. You're in the thinking that says your mind belongs to the internet. You're in the mm. thinking of the populace, the status quo. You're in the likes and the shares and the subscribe, subscribing that has been done over your life. That's the way you're thinking. Your value system is coming from the wrong source. Your value system needs to come from Jesus Christ. He is the author and the finisher of whose faith? Hallelujah. Your faith. Amen? My faith. And so I want to invite you right now to unsubscribe from the gurus that you're listening to now and listen to the ultimate teacher, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I want you. you to accept him right now. I want you to accept them right now. That means dropping what you're doing and getting up with me Thank you, Jesus. and have your arrested hands in the air. They signify, Lord, you got me. Thank you. The message was so pointed, so straightforward. Thank you. There was no way that I did not know that it was talking to me mm -hmm. and you, what Jesus. I should do with my life. So, God, I'm ready to give my life to you. And so as the preacher stands here before me, asking me to pray, I will pray with my whole heart. Amen. So if you want to be saved right now, repeat this prayer you, after me. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Thank Say, you, Lord. Father, Thank you, Lord. Father, I come to you. I come to you. Say your name. I come to you, Michelle. Hallelujah. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Thanking you for an opportunity. Thanking you for an opportunity. To get right with you. To get right with you. The preachers told me, the preachers told me to make a 180 degree turn, to make a 180 degree turn not a 360 Jesus. degree turn, turn, but a 180 you. degree 180 turn degree. towards you, Jesus. Thank you, so I turn to you this evening. Thank you, I accept you as my Lord and Thank as my Savior. Lord, Savior. I want you to baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I want you to make me new. 
I'm tired of the old me. I'm tired of the old results I keep getting. And I want to experience the newness of life in Christ Jesus. So I'm saved. And I thank God for it. I'm saved. And nobody can take this away from me. Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray and do give thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. If you said There's that some prayer. people in the kingdom now. Yeah. We thank God for your salvation. Amen. Welcome. 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 Welcome to the body of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. If this is not the ministry where you want to be plugged into, we're mm -hmm. okay with that. Amen. Yeah. We just want to be about our Father's business, mm -hmm. amen. And mm -hmm. so we ask that you would go to the website, www.ilm247.org, amen. And y'all know I like to always or often give a prayer. I want to just encourage all of you, those who are in the body yes. of Christ and those who've been struggling with sin. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that sin is very real. Yes, Lord. But we thank you, Lord God, that you are the deliverer, Lord God, that you're uh, a healer. Yes, you are. And so, Lord God, that one thing that many things, Lord God, that some have been struggling with, Lord God, I ask, oh God, that you would help them, Lord God, let them know, Lord God, hallelujah, that My just mama. like you were able to get up from out of the grave, Lord God, mm. that you're able to pull them from out of their grave situation, Lord God, mm. and so I just thank you even right now, Lord God, I ask that you will go, Lord God, and and just minister, Lord God, to their heart, Lord God, let them know that there's no sin, Lord God, that any of us committed this to great that you won't forgive us for and so i thank you lord god for the murderers lord god yes god. sometimes we don't murder physically but sometimes without tongues oh god, yes, god. I ask that you would forgive us for that lord god forgive yes, us god. for harsh tongues forgive us lord god for every sin that we've committed lord yes, god, god against you against people lord god and help us lord god to be mm. right to be right lord god that we want to turn towards you lord god so that we can lord. get others saved lord god and so that we can all mature in your word. Amen. It's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Jesus name. Name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We Hallelujah. want you all to be encouraged. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, and if you have been ministered to by this message, like I have, amen, yes. and you've realized that you need to make some 180 degree turns in your life, what I would like for you to do is, do you know someone else who needs to make a couple of 180 degree turns in their lives? If you do, like this message and share this message with them, not out of spite, but out of the opportunity for them to come out of darkness. Yeah, thank Don't you. you have a few people that you want to see out of darkness right now? Well, share this message with them and preach the gospel with Pastor and I. Amen. You're much better preacher than we are. <laughs> Spread Amen. that word of God. Amen. Amen. We love you so much and value your time and your efforts with us. But we love you. But you got to know, more importantly than our love, that God, loves, God you. loves you. Amen. We want you to grow with us. Amen. Amen. Peace. Peace. We love you. We love you. Oh, that's a blessing. The Lord is good, isn't he? He is.